I don't know why you're rating Myoshik that low. Have you not been watching his fights? I have been. He's 9-0. and He's absolutely been fantastic in his last three fights. He got a decision over Jelly Beltran, who you got to admit is tough as nails and hard as hell to knock out. So just beating Joey Beltran is something in itself. Then he rocked Phil Freeze in just 43 seconds in Omaha. And on top of that, he destroyed Shane Del Rosario by TKO with elbows. So you can't say he has no chance against Stefan Struve. I don't know. I just, I see Struve winning this fight. When it was announced, I just, I see Struve winning this fight. I don't know why. I don't see Yochik winning this fight. I'm not saying you're wrong. I think Struve is the guy with the bigger upside right now. But if you're saying Myoshik has no chance, then you're wrong. Struve will win, but Myoshik will make it a good fight. It's one of those fights where you have two guys and one guy, you know, it's like two different skill sets. And when it comes to these different skill sets, you've got Struve's trumping Myoshik every step of the way here. I don't know if I go so far as that. I think these guys are not nearly as far apart as you're rating them to be. Look, I agree with you that on paper, Struve has the advantages. He has the height advantage. He has a jiu-jitsu advantage. He has an experience advantage. But Miyoshik is on a big-time roll. He's undefeated. He's looked great in three straight UFC fights. And... The only reason that we don't know how well-rounded he is is because we haven't gotten to see more of him. Maybe he goes in there, has a great main event, hangs with Stephen Struve every step of the way. Not is, saying he wins. I'm just saying I think he can hang with him. This is Miocic's really big test. I mean, Struve, by taking this fight, is he going down taking this fight? Or do you think by a, a dominant victory here, he steps up in that weight class? I think if he can get Myoshik to prove something, because this guy is on a big-time roll. Again, to me, you're operating Myoshik incredibly. I, you know, I I, uh, I agree he's a good fighter. I'm not saying he's like some chump. I'm just saying in this particular instance, uh, you said it yourself, everything on paper points to Struve. If Myoshik win, hey, good for him. But in the heavyweight division, stylistically, this is a fight that Struve cannot lose. Well, the problem is that Stroop has had some fights that he shouldn't have lost that he has. He shouldn't have lost to Travis Brown, and he did. He shouldn't have lost to Roy Nelson, and he did. Stroop is possible of having that mental collapse and making a mistake in a fight. Okay. If Stroop wins here, who do you put up, put him in front of next? Well, if Stroop wins here... He's got to be one fighter less away from a title shot. And if Miocic wins? Miocic would probably need two or three before he got that chance. I think the winner here should fight Frank Mir. That's not a bad idea. Because Frank Mir ain't doing anything in November. Or October, sorry. And I would even go further than that. If the winner of this fight went on and beat Mir... I would say that's a guaranteed heavyweight title shot. I think the winner should fight Mir and the loser fights Cormier. That's not a bad idea either. All right, well, that's going to be our predictions for uh, UFC from Nottingham, England. Yep. Any idea? The Hollis. Who is going to the show? There. I, if it's not, I'd be shocked. Do you think someone's going to run in the cage again like last time? No, probably not. Yeah, that was embarrassing, eh? Not nearly as embarrassing as what happened on Raw this week. What happened on Raw this week? I missed something. You didn't see that? Oh, the mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. You're talking during about the mask, Ryback. right? I'm talking about during Ryback's match. No. Two fans hit the ring during Ryback's match. No way. And Justin Roberts took out one of them himself. Oh, we'll talk about him tomorrow. Mm-hmm. There's a story about Justin Roberts in the news we got to talk about tomorrow night. Yeah, it's, uh, 
Probably not going to get very far in Canada driving like that. That's all I can say. <laughs> Zing. And uh, next week, Stevie, we get to talk about the show from the Target Center. Why are we talking about that? Because I'll be there. Live. Yep. I'll be doing who knows what. I'm still waiting to get the official schedule from UFC of all the different things that will be going on. Are you going to be able to do Glove Up next week as well? Probably be able to do Glove Up. You might be on your own for AMP. Yeah, because this is a Friday night show, so. Right, so I'm probably going to be going up there Wednesday or Thursday. We'll see how it works out. And then the fight, I'm just going over the schedule here. We have a fight next Friday, then uh, eight days after that, October the 13th. The big Anderson Silva, Stefan Bonner. I still can't believe I'm saying that. Anderson Silva fighting Stefan Bonner in Brazil. Get over already. I, like the last fighter I expect to face, to face Anderson Silva. Yeah, but this is what happens when Anderson Silva fights guys at heavyweight. It's not like they're going to do Anderson Silva versus John Jones. And looking at that card, Stevie, every single fight has a Brazilian. Well, that's what you would expect. Just like the fights. on Fuel TV is catering to the town crowd by having British fighters in the main events. Wow. There's five, seven, eight Americans, one Sweden, and the rest are Brazilian. You really take big notice of this nationality thing when you're looking at cards, don't you? Well, it's kind of, it's, it's all you see is a wave of green, yeah. Okay, but I don't know why you expect anything different. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I just UFC, expect it more of a mix-up, you know? No, UFC is not like WWE, where they're going to go to the hometown and make all the guys lose. They're going to stack up a card with local fighters because they expect some of them to win and make the crowd happy. Well, that's true. It's not you. It's not WWE. But after the Silva show, we have a few weeks off between shows, so that's pretty good. Well, that's not counting stuff like Bellator and World Series of Fighting and shit. And Strike Force. Yeah. But uh, as far as you and Zufa is concerned, I'm I'm really happy that they're actually paying the fighters who, you know, they're not having their fight this Saturday. Yeah, it was only fair because it's not their fault that Showtime canceled. Yeah, it's it's out of their hands. And do you agree with the time pulling the plug as we go full circle in tonight's show? I understand why they did it, but there were fighters that were willing to step up and take that fight with Pat Healy. They should have at least given somebody a chance. Now, the final question I'll have on you on this topic, Stevie, is simply this. With the trend now being set of if we can't make a main event, the whole show is canceled. How many shows will be canceled in 2013? Well, that depends on whether you're talking about Strike Force or UFC. Well, we'll say Zufa. I think whether or not a Strike Force card under Zufa gets canceled has more to do with Showtime. And I think whether a UFC card gets canceled has more to do with whether or not they've got a co main event they can go with. See, I'm going to be a little bit more proactive. I'm going to say two or less will be canceled in 2013. I'd honestly be surprised if we have another year where two cards get canceled. I think everything will be done possible to save a card. It's it's going to come down to one of those situations where it's a card where they only have one fight people are paying to see and they can't find any replacement fighter to take that fight. But the injury bug is kind of dictating that. I mean, we saw the replacements on Calgary. We saw the replacements in Brazil, but they still put on those shows. Right. But usually when a main event goes down, it's because both guys are injured and unable to take the fight. In most cases, even if one guy in the main event is out, find somebody to face the other guy. All right, well, that's going to do it for the show, everybody. Uh, Stevie, is there anything you want to plug for this week on the network? No, nope, no plugs this week. Do you have any big guests uh, tomorrow night for AMP? It's open mic. The guests are the listeners. Oh, boy. 
All right. Well, before we go, Stevie, I got to get your prediction tomorrow night, NFL, the Cleveland Browns against the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens. Or is it Ravens or Eagles? Sorry, I'm, I'm confused. Well, you said Ravens, so I'm going to assume that you're not pulling that out of your ass. <laughs> no, it's Ravens. That was right. Yeah. Then I stand by my pick. Yeah, I'm picking the Ravens as well. Um, it's one of those things where it's an easy matchup and the NFL has now shifted to, it looks like having a Thursday night game every week. And if you're a hit TV show like, uh, Grey's Anatomy, Elementary, CSI, any of the Impact really big wrestling. network shows, any of the big network shows, not Impact Wrestling. No, it affects cable too. I I guess, but I'm saying like the big four, like okay, CBS, but the NFL. Fox. No, wait, wait, wait. Your argument is already flawed because the NFL network is cable, so it's going up against other things on cable. I I guess. I mean, I can see your argument. Okay, yeah. I'm just saying that if you're a hit TV show on cable or on prime time, these games should be two big teams. This is a point where it's not a big game. This should not affect the ratings needle whatsoever. They should have like the no. Chicago Bears. No, I disagree with you there because I think the NFL itself is enough of a draw that other shows take a hit when the NFL's on. Even a bad Monday night football game still hurts Raw. Oh, that game this Monday night. Oh, we're going to talk about that. I was talking about that in particular. I'm just saying football is so big that everything else bows to football. So you're saying if the Cleveland Browns played the KC Chiefs, it'd still outdraw impact? It'd still outdraw yeah. a big show? Okay, impact's okay. a bad example, but... Okay, I mean, you, you got to come up with something bigger than football for it to get beat. Like, uh, like some breaking news event, like a hostage crisis in Israel that like everybody is watching on the news 24 hours a day. Then of course football is going to lose. Okay. Fair enough. I just think with the Cleveland Browns, let's just say they're not ready for prime time in my opinion. No, but this is why people watch the NFL because it's the same thing as fighting. Even a team that's complete dogs and shouldn't win a game. When they get on TV, weird things happen Balls bounce different ways, fumbles occur, field goals get kicked at the last second. Shit happens. That's why people watch football. It's the same reason you watch fighting. Just because a guy is a 4-1 to favorite doesn't mean he's not going to get knocked out four seconds into the fight. Because in a real sport, anything can happen. But uh, will you, we'll go back to fighting, and this will be the last point. Do you think the ratings dictate you know, if they bring back a show, I mean, you've got Ultimate Fighter, which is now what season fourteen or fifteen. And the ratings are sliding 16. again. Sixteen. It's, it's sixteen. Jeez, sixteen. And the ratings keep sliding. At what point do you know the excuses of well, there's football on, well, there's this, well, there's that. At what point does the Ultimate Fighter or you know a low end FX show, you know? Where do you draw the line? Well, with Ultimate Fighter, they're working with a whole different set of dynamics here because there's a long-term deal in place between UFC and Fox, which guarantees a certain amount of programming for what Fox is paying to Zufa. So you're going to get more seasons of the Ultimate Fighter no matter how bad the ratings are. And the only thing that's going to change is when and where the Ultimate Fighter airs. You know, it may, due to poor performance on Friday nights, get moved to a different night of the week, or it may get moved from FX to Fuel TV, but it's not like the show is getting canceled. They're still going to keep programming it, whether or not the ratings are there. I think if you want the Ultimate Fighter to have good ratings, you got to put better coaches than Shane Carwin in Big Country. I said it last week. If you put John Jones and Daniel Cormier as coaches in 2013, people are going to watch. I mean, look at FX. Those ratings, the prelims, they lost 19,000 viewers from the last prelim. That's a scary number to lose. And hopefully they'll pick some up on the next time they're on FX for prelims. 19,000 is not a scary number to lose. That's, that's, that's chump change. When you're losing like 100,000 viewers or a half million viewers, which 
has happened at times to shows like Raw. That's scary. That's 19,000 ain't nothing. And That's again, the- no, the, I'm sorry, but this is a really shitty argument on your part, and I'm going to call you out for it, because quite frankly, all they care about is hitting their target demographic. If they got the 14 to 35 young male audience, and it's like number one that night for that demo, they don't give a shit if they lose 19,000 viewers. As long as they're number one in that demo, they're making money. 19,000, that's basically the crowd that showed up for UFC 152. That's the amount of people they lost. From the prelims. And in TV ratings, 19,000 is nothing. If they constantly lose 19,000, Stevie, that's going to add up real fast, though. Okay, if you lost 19,000 viewers every 15 minutes, that would be a problem. But if you lose 19,000 viewers overall or just for one fight, I don't think that's a problem. I think it's a slow leak, but the slow leak will you know, still cause damage. Again, I, I go all the way back to what I said before. There's demographics and target audience and marketing that has a bigger influence in this than just the sheer number of viewers. I mean, you can make the same argument for a show like SmackDown. You can say, oh, SmackDown gained or lost X number of million viewers over the previous week. You know, they did 2.81 million viewers one week and 2.69 million viewers the next week. But guess what? Both weeks, they're number one on cable on Friday night. So nobody gives a shit how many X number million viewers it was, as long as they're number one in their target demographic. That's all the network wants. Well, I will agree to disagree. I think that a slow leak, I mean, if they lose 20, we'll say 20,000 viewers over every event for the next four events, that's 80,000. You know what I mean? A slow leak adds up. And they need to nip this in the bud now. They need to put more exciting fights on the prelims. They need to put more exciting people on the Ultimate Fighter because that's why they're losing viewers, in my opinion. I don't think there's anything wrong with Shane Carwin and Roy Nelson as coaches. I just think what you've got going on here is that people are a little tired of the Ultimate Fighter and they're a little burned out on MMA in general because there's so much of it going on right now. Not just UFC, as we've mentioned, there's Bellator, there's Strike Force, there's World Series of Fighting, and if you're really hardcore, there's more shit than that. There's like Super Fight League and Shark Fights and Titan Fighting and Invicta. You know, you can get all the MMA you can handle. It's a virtual smorgasbord of stuff right now. So I don't think the coaches are necessarily that bad for this season. You could have better drawing ratings with different coaches, but then you could also have the exact same rating with two of the best coaches ever. You could have like Rampage and Rashad, and if you were putting them on this year in this climate, they'd probably be doing that rating because no matter how big of a draw they were two or three years ago, they aren't going to be now because it's just the environment that everything is in. I was thinking, I was talking about this with a friend of mine this week, and I said, you know what would be an amazing Ultimate Fighter, and this would be something that would bring the ratings up to a level where People are like, wow, every episode is amazing, and I can't wait till next week, which hasn't been said for a while now. What if you had, okay, fine, you're going to have GSP, you're going to have Anderson Silva, they're going to fight, but they're going to be coaches first, and the payoff will be at Dallas Stadium. Mm. Team Canada, Team Brazil. You could possibly build up an ultimate fighter that way, but... I still hold steadfast to my conviction that that is never going to take place as a fight because there's more to lose than the game for GSP. Even if it's a catch weight in the middle, like 178. No, because GSP has to put on weight to take that fight and it's not going to be to his advantage because he's a peak athlete at the weight he's at now. We've had this argument before, but you're still steadfast and that fight will never happen, eh? When I say I'm steadfast in my conviction, I fucking mean it. I don't see any good reason for GSP to take that fight. Well, it's got to get through Carlos Condit first, so. Well, yeah, let's just not count the chips before they're cashed in. Let's see if he can beat Condit and unify those titles, and then we'll start talking about other things. Yeah, 